All right, this is a review of what we talked about in class on Friday because I went through it kind of fast. So for uh, ligands that can do pi interactions, whether it's a pi acceptor, so pi acceptors have empty orbitals of pi symmetry, empty low-lying pi symmetry orbitals. And so that's why they can accept high symmetry electron density from the metal. So the example I gave was CO. So oh, this marker is horrible. OK. Much better. So here we have electron in the metal. And then it's going into our empty, I'll call this L. For CO, this was, it was the pi star of CO the CO pi star. But now we have a metal to ligand pi interaction. For pi donors, filled orbitals on ligand pi symmetry. These are often lone pairs in perpendicular p orbitals. So for a metal, again, it's the same set of orbitals that have the same pi symmetry. So for octahedral, it was the T2g orbitals. So octahedral So like the dxy, xz, yz in an octahedral complex. But now our ligand has the filled electrons. So this is the p orbital on a halide anion, for example. And so now we're donating this way. So this is pi donation. So when we're talking about donation or accepting, we're talking about from the ligand to the metal uh, for donation. And then acceptor is lip metal to ligand. So that's the key part. And then so the reason why these end up these two types of ligands end up with different effects on our d orbital splitting, our delta, is because of where the energies of these pi symmetry orbitals lie. So for empty orbitals, these are usually above, they lie above, uh, okay, no, 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 there's, does this show up? Okay. Energy above d orbitals. And then so for these filled orbitals here, these pi donor orbitals, energy below. And then so that results in whether the d orbitals go down or d orbitals go up. So let me, let me do an illustration. It's just kind of what I was doing in class, but I guess it got lost in translation. So okay, if I start from the very beginning of my MO diagram, so on my left, I have the metal. So let's just do the d orbitals. I'll ignore the s and p orbitals for now. So these are my fruit. Let's say these are our 3d orbitals. So they're all in the same energy for the free metal atom. And then let's suppose we have 6CO ligands. So our 6CO ligands, we now have six sigma symmetry lone pair orbitals. So down here. These are our kind of 6L sigma, the lone, the homo. And then if we think about CO, CO has the LUMO, which is the pi star orbitals, and they are higher in energy than this. This was that, that's the middle sigma orbital for CO. So now we have 12, so 2 times 6. And so these are our 12 pi star orbitals, CO pi star. This is the LUMO. And these are empty. So we have overall 18 orbitals, and they, these can all interact in different ways with the 3D orbitals here, or I guess the five 3D orbitals. OK. So these HOMO, the, these lone pairs on the CO, again, can only interact in a sigma fashion 
with the x squared minus y squared and the dz squared orbitals, the eg set. So, um, but again, these also interact with our s orbitals and our p orbitals. So again, these go down in energy, and so we'll just ignore them. These are all filled. So these are m l sigma, right? Because they've gone down, they're sigma symmetry, and then they're, they're close in energy to the ligands, so they're all filled and we ignore them just like we did before. And for our d orbitals, again, only the x squared minus y squared and the dz squared go up, because these are the only ones that interact with these sigma orbitals. This is our eg, which is again is still m l sigma star. Okay, so now before when we had sigma only ligands, the remaining orbitals from the d orbitals, the t2g, stayed at the same energy as the, these free d orbitals because they didn't interact, they were non bonding. But now we have these pi d orbitals up here. And again, these orbitals can interact with our uh, dxz, dyz, et cetera, et cetera, in that fashion, right? So here's dxz. So we have four ligands along our xz axes. But now we can have, let's say, one can interact this way. Here's that's, that's my CO, right? I'll just draw that symmetry orbital. We have that one. We have that one. We have that one. And then the same would happen for x, y, and y, z. So now we can have interaction. So we have these empty pi symmetry orbitals and these d orbitals. And so type bonding coefficients. I'll do it in a different color. Let's do green. Okay. So we again form bonding anti bonding combinations. So we have a bonding combination, and then we have the anti bonding combination. And so uh, for reasons I won't go into, all 12 orbitals kind of go up. So there's still 12 up here. But so we again have this is ML pi, this is ML pi star. So the reason why we only consider this final box here, this final box is our d orbital splitting diagram, because these these orbitals, these CO pi star orbitals are higher energy than the d orbitals. So when we have bonding, anti-bonding, these orbitals up here are closer in energy to the to the ligand, and these orbitals down here are closer in energy to the uh, to the metal. So I think about populating our d count. Let's suppose we have d two, for example. Our 2d electrons go into this pi bonding set. So that's why we only consider these five orbitals here. So for the pi acceptor, now our orbitals have gone down. They've been stabilized because of this pi bonding interactions. This down, this up for bonding, anti-bonding. And then the result is we have a bigger delta O. OK. So this is the pi acceptor. This is the pi acceptor scenario. Okay, so let's do the pi donor scenario. Let me erase that here. Okay, uh, let me kind of just give myself some more room. Okay, so the pi donor scenario, we can again set up our same MO diagram. So I'll again have, here's my metal. And suppose that we have now six chloride anions. So for the six chlorides, uh, we again have our six sigma donating. So if we're thinking about our chlorides, we can again have our sigma symmetry p orbitals. These are filled. But then we also have our pi symmetry p orbitals here. So these are, oh, I'm off screen, OK. So these are pi. These are sigma. So these are all filled p orbitals. So this is filled, this is filled, this is filled. So the chlorine p orbitals are all the same energy, but we have six sigma symmetry ones, one for each ligand. So uh, let me make sure I have this enough ink. OK. So we have, and chlorine, of course, is more electronegative than the d element. So we draw the energy below. So these are our six sigma p orbitals. And again, they're all filled. And then now we have these pi symmetry p orbitals. So this is this was p z. If we think about the z axis down the metal chlorine vector, 
and then we have PX, PY. So the P orbitals on chlorine are all filled for a chloride anion, but they're all the same energy as these PZ. So we still have 12 more orbitals, but in this case they're all filled. And they're all the same energy here. So this is a different situation than our pi acceptor, where our pi symmetry orbitals were empty and up here. So because they're all the same energy, now we have our interaction. Excuse me. So again, if we think about the sigma symmetry, so just this set over here, it's just like a sigma-only ligand. These go down in energy. We have very strongly stabilizing and filled ML sigma. And as a result, these interactions result in our sigma star with the EG ML sigma star. OK, and then now we do pi interactions. So like I was saying, because on the pi acceptor, these orbitals were higher, well, before bonding and antibonding, the d orbitals went down, and the ligand pi orbitals went up. Here, these are lower. So when we form our bonding and antibonding combinations, right, we have to form a pi bond. One goes down, one goes up. So the ligand orbitals go down to form the pi bond. And again, these are weaker interactions than a, than a sigma interaction. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these all go down, and they're all filled. And then so now, because the ligand orbitals went down, this went up, so now our d orbitals that are of pi symmetry, which is our T2G, went up. So now they're metal ligand pi star. And then so this is our final D splitting diagram. And then if we had like a D2 configuration, right, so two electrons here, if it, it was D2, all of these ligand based orbitals down here are filled, so we have to start filling here. So our D2 would go here. So that's why we care about this diagram. And then as a result, we have smaller delta O. So these are the two situations. So just remember for pi acceptors, bigger delta. For pi donors, smaller delta. And then sigma might be somewhere in the middle. Um, there are differences in sigma donati uh, donation. So uh, we said we saw yesterday, or we saw today, that ammonia ligands and water ligands are both sigma donors, right? NH3, sigma only because you can't really pi accept. And then water is also sigma only. But ammonia is further to the right on the special chemical series. And that, that's because it's more sigma donating. So you can have differences in sigma only ligands, but uh, and that results in a change. That, that results in a change in how, how sigma star your EG orbitals are. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say? OK, so pi donors, if you have lone pairs, so like halides, hydroxide, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you have pi acceptors, CO is very common, so these are empty pi star orbitals. So CO, cyanide, CN minus. Uh, phosphines are also um, pi acceptors. So let's see, phosphines. So phosphines look like amines, uh, but so they have that lone pair. So this is their sigma. The phosphines also have those empty D orbitals that can be pi star. So also pi acceptor. Um, oh, okay, uh, what else? Oh, and then lastly, one hallmark of pi accepting, so is because when we form these orbitals, now we have the uh, donation, we have that back bonding interaction, so back bonding aside. Right, so if we have our CO, here's the pi star, and we have our metal. Right, so we're donating into this pi star. So when we have back bonding, this puts a lot of density on the pi star, so that weakens the CO bond. Um, so I'll give an example in class, but one way to tell if you have good back bonding is from IR spectroscopy. So CO has a very intense absorption around, I think, 2143 wave number for free CO. But then when you bind it to the metal, that vibrational frequency goes down if you take an IRI spectrum. That's because we're back bonding, so the, that weakens the bond, so the frequency becomes lower. Lower energy, lower vibration. 